Was it just me, or did a big chunk of Mark Golding's budget speech in Jamaica sound like a PNP manifesto? Elections are definitely in the air. Here are highlights of the opposition leader's plans for education, crime, and the economy. I'm Khalil Ranos, founder of Money Media. We make business and finance easy to understand. Now, Jamaica's general elections are constitutionally due by December 2025, so the government can call it any time between now and then. And it was especially obvious this year that both party leaders were using their budget presentations to lay out their plans for the country. Now, I've already told you about the prime minister's speech, so here are some highlights from Golding. Number one, education. According to the opposition leader, developing human capital would be at the forefront of the PNP's term in government. The next PNP government is, implement, is committed to implementing measures to ensure that Jamaica's human capital has the capacities and skills to participate competitively in a high-value-added economic environment. Golding said the PNP's approach to education would include investing in teachers, infrastructure, technology, and support for parents. He plans to prioritize early childhood and primary schools by raising standards and eliminating literacy and numeracy gaps. He also wants to give teachers a break on their student loans, motor vehicle concessions, better access to NHT loans, and priority for NHT houses. Number two, crime. Of course, one of the biggest issues any Jamaican government will face is dealing with crime. Well, Golding said they would revitalize the peace management initiative and train violence interrupters to help lead the change. Now, this one has stirred up some controversy. The peace management initiative started in 2004. Its job was to ensure peace and stability, particularly in western Jamaica, by detecting and managing potentially explosive criminal or violent situations and diffusing conflict. Now, there's some confusion about the term violence interrupters and who they are. In his response to Golding's presentation, the prime minister said, I'm not closing the door on something like the Peace Management Initiative. I think it needs to be properly restructured, properly thought out. It has a place, and we will go back to the drawing board and see how we can bring it in. What we don't want, what we don't want is any legitimization of gang leaders to believe that they can pretend to be peacemakers. But social justice advocate Horace Levy told RJR News that the Prime Minister is mistaken in, in, in thinking that uh, violence interrupters were, were criminals. They were not. Violence interrupters that we use in the Peace Management Initiative were never a form of criminals. They were upstanding uh, um, people in the community, well-known, uh, well-respected. Uh, so it's just not the case that violence interrupters were ex-criminals or that the PMI used ex-criminals or former criminals uh, to be interrupters of violence. That was never the case. So first things first, we need some clarification as to who these violence interrupters are and the exact role they would play. Now, number three is the PNP's plan for the economy. Golding mentioned a couple of times that... That's why we must transition Jamaica from a low-wage, low-tech, low-growth economy. And for the PNP, that starts with strengthening food security. That's where SMART comes in. SMART stands for Sustainable Management of Agriculture through Research and Technology. According to Golding, this would introduce climate-smart farming to boost productivity and expand and repair farm roads. They'd also partner with UWE and other technical institutions to do research. The opposition leader said his government would also focus on emerging industries like artificial intelligence and the cultural and creative industries to maximize Jamaica's earning potential. AI is booming right now, and the AI revolution is here to stay. So investing in AI and AI training doesn't sound like a bad idea. And Jamaica's culture and creative industries are truly untapped, so the potential there is huge. We still have a few more videos to go in our budget series, so subscribe to my newsletter to get on the mailing list. Click the link up here or in the description. Let's get this money. Let's get this money. <laughs> <laughs>